Hello dear students. Welcome to the lecture series of object oriented programming. In this lecture, we are going to see one of the important feature principle of object oriented programming that is inheritance. We will see how inheritance provide us the important feature of reusability. We will see how to define the derived classes and different types of inheritance. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to understand the use of inheriting the classes. You will be able to define the derived classes and you will be able to introduce different forms of inheritance. What is inheritance? Inheritance is the mechanism of deriving the new classes from the old one. The reuse of a class that has been already tested, debug and used many times can save the efforts of developing and testing the same again. As we know that while developing a system, number of classes are involved and all those classes we have to first design and then we have to implement and then we have to test and debug those classes. So when we design and implement those classes first time, uh, so much of time is required as well as efforts are required. But when we design a similar type of system again, already the classes are available with us. So it is possible to reuse those classes which are already existing with us. So those classes can be used as it is which suits our requirements or those classes can be used with some modifications. Then of course the time required to implement, test and debug uh, to those classes will be reduced. Once the class has been written and tested, it can be adopted by the other programmers to suit their requirements and the programmer can create the new classes using the existing classes, using the uh, properties of existing classes. And so the mechanism of deriving the new class from the old one is referred as derivation or inheritance. It is referred as a derivation because we are deriving the new class using the existing class, using the old class, using the properties of old class, existing class. Here the old class is referred as a base class and the new class is referred as the derived class. The derived class inherits some or all the properties from, from the base class. It is not necessary that all the properties from the base class has been derived. It, it may happen that derived class may inherit some or little properties from the base class. Let us see how to define the derived class. The derived classes can be defined by specifying the relationship with the base class in addition to its own details. As I told you, derived classes can inherit the properties, the member functions or the data members from the, uh, from the existing class, from the base class. But the derived class may have its own properties. So in addition to its own properties, in addition to its own member functions and data members, derived class may inherit the data members or the member function of the existing class that is base class. Let us see how to define the derived class. Here I have shown the syntax of defining the derived class. We have to use the keyword as a class followed by the name of derived class. This is our new class which we want to design and implement followed by the colon. This colon indicates that the derived class is derived from the base class. Here it is the name of base class. In front of the base class, we have to give the visibility mode. The visibility mode is optional and it indicates whether the features of base class are privately derived or publicly derived by this derived class. And inside the parenthesis, we have the members of the derived class. By default, the visibility mode is private. That means Privately, we can derive the properties. Privately, we can access the member functions and data members of this base class. Now, let us see how uh, we can derive the pro private, how, how, how we can derive the properties privately and publicly. First, let us see privately inherited members. When the public members of the base class 
are derived privately then the public members of the base class become the private members of the derived class the public members of the base class can only be accessed by the member functions of the derived class and they are inaccessible to the objects of derived class that means we cannot access those members using the dot operator here is the example how the uh, how the members of the base class are privately inherited now here i have a class as a derived followed by the colon followed by the visibility label that is private followed by the base class now here whatever the members who are going to derive from this base class so the public members of that base class if we are deriving privately then those members will be privately accessible to this derived class that means those members are private to the derived class that means those private members can be accessible by the member function of the derived class only and we cannot access those member functions or those mem data members using the objects and the dot operator now let us see how publicly we can inherit the properties of base class here is the example here i have a class followed by the derived class followed by colon followed by the visibility label here the visibility label is public and followed by the base class here the properties of the base class are publicly inherited by the derived class name as the as the derived now whatever the public members of the base class were going to derive by the derived class those public members become the public members of this derived class also and as those members are publicly available by this derived class those members are accessible to the objects of the derived class let me clear you one thing private members cannot be accessible to the objects private members we have we can access through the member functions of that respective class only so when we are inheriting the properties of the base class privately in that case those members will be private to the derived class and hence they are not accessible by to the objects of the derived class and when those members are publicly inherited those members will be publicly available to the derived class and hence those members whether they are data members or member member functions they will be accessible to the objects of the derived class now here i have not used the visibility label as by default the visibility label if it is not mentioned it will be considered as a private that means the members which we are going to inherit from the base class will be privately inherited privately derived by that derived class the private members of the base class will never be the members of the derived class as we know that private members cannot be accessed uh, by the by the other classes as well as private members cannot be accessed by the by the objects of that respective class but private members can be accessible to the member functions of that respective class only okay so the private members of the base class will never be the members of the derived class now let us see the different types of inheritance there are specifically five types of inheritance the first one is single inheritance the second one is multiple inheritance the third one is hierarchical inheritance the fourth one is multi level and the fifth one is hybrid inheritance now let us see one by one in short now let us see the single inheritance when the derived class with only one base class is available it is referred as a single inheritance for example here i have a single class class a as a base class and i have another class b as a derived class now here the derived class is inheriting the properties from this base class a now here the derived class is available with only one base class so it is referred as a single inheritance 
there is a relationship as one to one multiple inheritance in the multiple inheritance the derived class with the multiple base class are available now let us see here the example of multiple inheritance here i have a base class a i have another base class b so here i have two base classes that means i can have more than one base classes and the properties of those multiple base classes can be inherited by the single class that is a derived class then in that case it is referred as a multiple inheritance single inheritance one base class one derived class multiple inheritance multiple base classes for the single derived class then that is referred as a multiple inheritance now let us proceed for the next type multi level inheritance when a class is derived from another derived class then it is referred as a multi level inheritance there is a chain of classes this inheritance uh, inheritance can have as many levels as long as our implementation doesn't go weird okay now let us see the example of multi level inheritance here we have three classes class a class b and class c now class a can be referred as a class base class 2 and class b can be referred as a base class 1 and we have a class c as a derived class now derived class c is inheriting the properties from the base class b whereas the base class b is inheriting some of the properties from base class 2 that is class a and ultimately the derived class c is inheriting the properties of base class a also but it is through class b so here there are three levels of inheritance okay so it is referred as a multi level inheritance the second uh, the next type of inheritance is hierarchical in inheritance when there is a one base class but that one base class uh, may be inherited by multiple derived classes then it is referred as a hierarchical inheritance now let us see here it is a one base class named as a and we have the different derived classes that is class b class c and class d now in this case the class b class c and class d are inheriting the properties from class a so here there is a single base class and multiple derived classes so it is referred as a hierarchical inheritance now let us see the last uh, type of inheritance that is hybrid inheritance where there is a combination of more than one type of inheritance it is referred as a hybrid inheritance now let us see the example here here we have a class a class b class c and class d now here class b and class d are the derived classes uh, of now let us see the last type of inheritance that is hybrid inheritance when there is a combination of more than one type of inheritance it is referred as a hybrid inheritance let us see the example here we have four classes as class a class b class c and class d now if you refer here i have class a as a base class whereas class b and class d are deriving are inheriting the properties from that base class a so here if you observe here i have a type of inheritance as a hierarchical in inheritance because two base uh, two derived classes that is class b and class d are inheriting the properties from the base class that is class a so if you observe this three then it is a type of hierarchical inheritance then if you refer class a class b and class c then class b is inheriting the properties from class a and class c is inheriting the properties from class b so class c is indirectly inheriting the properties from class a so if you observe the structure from class a to class b to class c then you can see this is a multi level inheritance as there is a chain of classes so here in the complete structure there are more than one type of inheritance is available that is two types of inheritance is available over here the first one is 
hierarchical inheritance and the second one is multi level inheritance and hence it is referred as a hybrid inheritance so i hope you have understand uh, the different types of inheritance that is single multiple multi level hierarchical and hybrid inheritance we have learned how to derive uh, how to define the derived classes as well as we have learned how reusability can be provided through the inheritance so we will meet in the next lecture happy learning